Hola, everybody. It's time for Pokemon. Oh. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Sorry okay. for the later stream today. Uh -oh. um, I got my uh, Moderna Oblongata booster. <laughs> hey, that's a good joke. That's pretty good. I what, like that. What is Oblongata from? I like struggling to remember. Medulla Oblongata. Oh, it's from that's... Waterboy, I believe. Okay. I was like trying to remember and hoping it wasn't something extremely inappropriate as I was saying it. My mandula. I'm long out. Um, oh, the. Sorry, I just noticed the um, card reset in OBS. Weird. To your reset your position or the. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, when you get a chance, can you share screen, share audio, and let's kick this puppy in the. Go Nats, yes. I guess. Is that how it goes? Um, yeah, so I got my Moderna boost yesterday, and I felt fine. Uh, and then I woke up at 1 a.m. with uh, really bad chills, and I did not sleep at all. And then at 6 o'clock, I decided I wasn't going to sleep. So I just sat on the couch and watched the Carbonaro effect for like four hours. Um, pretty... It's interesting. It's just funny hearing the different side effects, because mine was like... 24 hours after, I just felt this massive fatigue and then just like slept super heavily. I think I fell asleep on my living room floor at like 8 p.m. And then uh, then the next day I was fine. So for me, it was just fatigue. It wasn't a fever or anything. It was weird. Yeah, I just like, uh, yeah, it was it was kind of wild. But I, I mean, I'm feeling fine now. I'm and my arms more sore today because I think I kept sleeping on it. But other than oh, that, yeah. I am. uh I'm a hundred percent pretty much. I'm just extremely tired. Um, can I, um, can I ask a behind the scenes favor? Yes. Of you? What's up? Can, can you make your OBS Ninja show both of us? Because when you share your screen, it's a fantastic way for me to see everything in a single window. Oh yeah, that's fine. I had only done Thank that because I hate that it puts me on top because my eye I line. Know. Yeah. Um, we should probably message the guy because he's pretty receptive and just be like, hey, let us change the windows. Let us drag and drop yes. the windows in the thing so we can change our eye lines. What have I done here? That is so. How did this get so? Re oh, you know why? Because in in the interact, I had zoomed in. So oh, I think yeah. it uh, I think it's unsafe. You goofed it. I done goofed it. Sorry, folks. Just I feel like some, uh... um, I just have a strong urge to use this downtime in the stream to try out some of my new comedy bits, my new stand up uh, bits. Stand yeah. Let's. Let's. Do you want to hear some of them? No. Um, Are you sure? Yeah. Let's just avoid that. No, you can do Zach, some of your stand up me... bits. I, I feel like. I feel like I did. I don't want Hamilton. I am not rooting for Hamilton. Max for seven for win. We're talking about the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix that just finished. They are going into the final race of the season tied in points. I think Max is in the lead because he's won more Grand Prix. And Will, I'm telling you this right now. The final race is 8 a.m. Eastern on next Sunday. And I will be watching it in our Airbnb during PAX Unplugged. Okay. I can't miss it. It's the final race. They're tied. Nobody knows what's going to happen. There's so many controversies in this race. Uh, Zach, I want to know who you're rooting for. And if it's not Max, I will ban you from this stream. I'm I'm rooting for uh, Stefan. I think he's a really good Domenicali? racer. Domenicali? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's his name, Stefan Domenicali. I just pulled out a fancy name. Uh, honestly, there's a good chance he hit an F1 driver. <laughs> Fernando. Fernando. Esteban. Francisco. Hey, your bug nice. Pokemon's about to get fucking dead. I wish this uh, Pidgey knew Peck. Peck's a classic, yeah. Yeah, so I was excited after the stream yesterday, and I was like, oh, I can go back and farm all these areas and everything. And then I literally mm -hmm. start reading the guide. It's like, be careful when you jump down into Cerulean City as you will not be able to backtrack until after Diglett's cave. I was like, excuse me? Oh, I didn't even 
Wait. That's not true. I don't. I don't have think to learn, that's true. You have to learn cut, or you have to. You, you have learn, to. You learn cut before Diglett's cave. Yes, but you can't. That slow bro thing. The person doesn't move until I don't know. It said something about Diglett's cave. They said it would be a bit, anyways. Yeah. No, it's just like because I definitely backtracked. Yeah, but that uh, you write about the the cut. The cut prevents you from backtracking right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because the way back, the way I came in is only an up uh, downhill. Yeah. Metapod, no. I did, though, uh, last night do an escape room, and that was pretty fun. Um, oh, like an actual? For like some reason, there's virtual, there's virtual escape rooms now, so I have to. <laughs> That's true. I did an actual escape room uh, with, uh, uh -huh. it was for Karen's brother's birthday, uh, so there were six of us, and it was fun. My, my problem with escape rooms is, like, I just want to go, um, yeah. but I've learned after doing a couple of them to that nobody likes the person that does that so my my like new favorite thing to do in escape rooms is to like give everyone an opportunity to do something so like as soon as i find yeah. something i'm like hey guys we found something let's go to the center of the room and since it was her brother's birthday like every time we found something i like handed the note to him like all that sort of stuff yeah because i'm like if i can't like yeah. rip through this like i'm gonna <laughs> no, let no. someone else have fun with it you know yeah um, I, I so uh, Mark Rober, I believe, was the YouTuber. He actually had a really good video where he said, "Like this is a strategy." We came up with some strategies for escape rooms, and and he actually did like a like a semi scientific test where he had a group of people try to go through an escape room on their own, and then and then he taught them his like five or six strategies or tips, and then had them go through a different escape room, and they ripped through it in like forty minutes. And the first wow. one they couldn't solve. And I, I'm trying to remember. I think I think one of them, one of the big ones was. There should be one person who knows everything in terms of there's like if somebody finds something they need to go to that one person and say i found a lock it looks like this and then they can keep looking at other stuff or try or try the lock and that way um if somebody's like oh i found a lock and they go away and somebody else is like i found a box with a key in it that one person knows all the pieces and they can say you two team up and then the other thing was like always be looking like if there's a if there's a single puzzle give it to one person and let them work on it while everybody else keeps working you know like try and like minimize people overlapping tasks it, there were a couple other strategies but like that makes me want to do an escape room now where i'm like i feel like i have a good strategy now of how to how to do it effectively as opposed to just messing around for a while yeah totally like my whole thing was like anytime you find something it's to the center of the room you tell everyone you found something like there was a center table yeah and then uh, Karen's sister, she had the notepad. So like every time you found something, you said, hey, write this down. This it goes with that. This is where we found it. So like when it came to mm -hmm. and, and also mentally, we all kept track of like where the locks were. So as soon as like we found a three digit code, we said, OK, you, you, you go to your lock. Try the three digit code on the three digit locks. And then you, yeah. OK, four digit code, try all the four digit locks. So yeah, it was worked a lot better than uh that's smart i thought it would but uh they have another so this one like these escape rooms are like story based they're not puzzles necessarily so you're like it's kind of cool they're, they're still puzzles but there's like a through line you know yeah um so uh they have another one called the anomaly uh and they have a third one coming out in the spring but i told karen i was like hey can we just go into the anomaly one because we both were like trying to rein it in <laughs> it's just one yeah, yeah, yeah it's like it's like me with board games especially like co-op ones where i i i take over pretty quickly yeah. i i've been i've been uh left out of board game groups because i i take over and take it too seriously <laughs> so i yeah i feel like you do that uh, my the only reason i point this out because my other friend does this too back when we played pandemic is co-op board games mm -hmm. uh but i think yeah. that's just like you're not like a, a dick about it. I think you're just trying to get stuff done. 
Yeah, yeah, but it does become a little bit where it's like, there, I, the bad me is like, oh, there's three people playing. That means that I can dictate three actions this turn. So it's yeah. like, you do this, then you do this, then you do this. Which, th there is one game which works really well with that, which is Secret Hitler. Because once you get deep enough in the game that you have people you can trust, I, I'm really good at thinking like 12 turns ahead in that game. So there's been multiple games with my family where there's like six of us playing and I'll get to a point where I'm just like, guys, we can we can win this. All we have to do is you do this, then you do that, then you do that, and then we win. <laughs> and the whole thing about Secret Hitler is there's like people trying to manipulate and the other team is always just like, no, why are you <laughs> dictating? And it's just like, okay, so there's the uh, fascist. That's the traitor right there. Uh, <laughs> why am I fighting all these people in a row? Very confused. But uh, sorry, but the reason why it works really well in that game is because it's also a lot about hidden traitor. So me dictating actually plays into the game because it gives the other team like an opportunity to try and be like, oh, he's dictating because he's a bad guy. Don't trust him. You know, like it plays uh, into the game mechanics versus just somebody trying to run the table. Oh boy. Sorry, I'm just doing multiple stuffs over here. Heck yeah, fat bird. Here. Can I bookmark this? Um, I know you don't use Androids that much, but Chrome and Android has this nifty little feature where if you're on a website, you can do like add to home screen and it automatically adds a widget to your home screen directly linking to that website. Oh. But the, the the weird thing is only some websites don't have that. So you go to a website and you go to like the add to home screen and that button's just not there. <laughs> and it's very frustrating. It's like, it's just a bookmark on my home screen. This is a website. Why are you not letting me do it? And so the Twitch thing is like that. So I'm having to kind of go around it. Gotcha. Yeah, I've always been a, I I like the way I like Apple UI and like the way the phones respond. I think I'm just used to yeah. like that quickness. Um, although Karen has a new uh, Pixel Six, and that has like the 120 hertz refresh rate and everything. Oh yeah, those are good. That yeah. thing's snappy. That's like the first phone that's made me think like, oh, I should. Uh, I um. I, I like Apple phones are faster and they're they're they tend to work better just because it's like a forced UI standard, etc. But I really like the customization of Android. Like I've been using Nova Nova Launcher for a while now, which is like a custom home screen launcher, mm -hmm. and it's let me customize out the wazoo. Like I'll I'll show you real quick. So like for example, my home screen, my lock screen matches my home screen and then um it's not super clean but i have custom background custom widgets i have custom quick access here and then i scroll up and i have a custom app drawer with all my stuff down here and i made it oh. so everything is near my thumb there's so many customization options with android that you just do not get with iphone sorry i'm trying um, to i'm using that chart you sent me to see what's good against poison it says ground and psychic and I don't think there's fairies in this game. I am a fairy Pokemon. <laughs> oh, it's a bad joke. Um, poison. Yeah, ground and so I should switch to a ground type Pokemon. Um, which would be. I don't think I have a ground type. Okay, I finally got that working. Um. Because I, I honestly, I was thinking about, I got a new phone recently, a couple months ago, and I was looking at iPhones, and it just came down to, I don't get the customization, but also, I do use my phone a little bit for work. I, I can get work to send me a phone, because we have apps that only run on Android, and I could get work to send me a phone just for work, mm -hmm. but I was like, that's kind of a hassle. 
So I, I ended up just going with, with Android again. Um, I, I'm not like a diehard. There's definitely... There's definitely uh, benefits to both. Like, the big problem I'm having right now is... My Galaxy S21 has a really nice, like, multi multi-camera. You know, where you can do, like, an ultra-wide, has multiple lenses and all this stuff. But I guess because the phone's relatively new, a lot of the apps, like my banking app, when I try and do mobile deposit, it by default uses the wide camera, which distorts the image of the check. And there's no way in oh, the wow. in that app to change the camera. Yeah. So so it's like there are a lot of camera features on this phone, but it's dependent on the app. And there's no default camera option at the system level for me to say, hey, whenever you open an app, a camera app always default to this camera type. And I feel like with iPhone, you wouldn't have that because the hardware and the software is so standardized that when apps are developing, they're like, oh, just make sure this works on the last four iPhones versus we need to test this with every Android flagship out there. Yeah. Did you, uh, you finish that last guy and you get your nugget? Uh, I just wanted to go. I didn't want to waste two antidotes. I'm just going to heal my Pokemon. Oh. I've kind of, like, I, I used to be like this, where I would keep rushing to the Pokemon Center, but this last Pokemon game I've been playing, I kind of just hit this point where I'm like, there's not really that much of a penalty for wiping. So it's just like, I'll just keep pushing till I wipe. And honestly, I've gotten a lot farther in several places than I thought I would before I actually wiped. And there's places where I haven't wiped. Yeah, no, I'm uh, not like that either. It's just... I, I don't feel like going to a store and buying two more antidotes when I could just literally walk oh. backwards. Well, yeah, but the the yeah. other half is that I, I do the I do the thing like in this situation I would not have used antidotes at all. I would have been like it's not important. I'm not using it. So if you die, you die. I'll keep going till I party wipe. If I party wipe. Um. Like I had the situation last night where I got my fifth badge, and the boss battle, the gym battle took like 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> Because I was like, I should really give up. This is, looks very hopeless, but I ended up just barely winning. And I was like, okay, that's good. You know, I I thought I'd have to go back to the Pokemon Center and do it, but I, I did it. What type is main? Brown? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, I'm going to yeah, assume... Think, think... Well, is he fighting? What's good against... I, I'm going to... We should talk about this. I, I gave you a type chart. I don't think the type chart is cheating. No. But I think one of the boundaries that is cheating is I'm not going to tell you the type of Pokemon. Because I think part of the game is learning and recognizing and understanding that. You because what, I mean? what he's fighting type. <laughs> there you go. It made sense, right? He's got little boxing gloves. Yeah. I got to print this chart out, but the for some reason the Wi-Fi connection on my printer has gone bust like refuses because oh. I, I i did the dual band so i could just connect my, this crappy old printer to the 2.4 gigahertz and it like won't mm -hmm. find it in the wi-fi viewer on the machine anymore and the other great thing about that is you have to type oh. in the password one letter at a time searching through oh, yes. the lowercase and uppercase alphabet god uh, that's awful yeah so I, I I pulled out of my Arduino kit a printer cable and I've just been hooking up my laptop. <laughs> I was like, this is easier. Uh, yeah, I, I that's definitely a printer issue. But the other thing is, I don't know who to blame it for, but printer like support and softwares and drivers on Windows is still awful. Like my printer, I have to re-add it to my computers like once every three months or whatever, depending on which computer I'm using. Because, like, the printer's yeah. there, I try and print, and it goes, you know, trying to print, error, and then I just have to go into printers and remove the printer and add it back in, and then it starts working again. Yeah, this printer was it's great, so and then, like, the rollers started getting dirty, and, like, wasn't printing the colors correctly, even though the toner's full. It's just, like, I feel like all printers are destined to just start failing. Like, and I've cleaned everything, and I still can't figure out where it's coming. But we got Zach, this printer. I don't know if you're on but I'm looking at Twitter and Verstappen has been summoned to the stewards over the Hamilton collision and Lewis Hamilton has been summoned to the stewards as well as of 41 seconds ago. 
the race is over, but the results are not certain yet. Do I think Snake so controversial. is assuming a snake don't, would be poison I, type, right? I don't I don't know. That's something that I've been having trouble with. I mean I don't have a ground or a psychic anyway. So I'm gonna have to just bite his butthole. So I believe today you are heading north of the city. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I want like a like a. There's some good maps on the strategy wiki. Like the strategy wiki. Yeah. Yeah. So I, if you search like fire red walkthrough, like the third result will be yeah strategy wiki or something. Uh, it might, I can't Got it. think of these things. And then it has all the... And the table contents has like all the roots in it. So you just got to Cerulean City. So 24, 25... You, you basically have four routes ahead of you, and then we'll get to Vermilion City. Which okay. does have a gym. So oh. we could potentially do a gym today. Probably... Maybe not, because there, there's a lot to do between here and there. That reminds me, I, I did stuff on mine and I kind of hit a point where I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's next. Because I'm missing three badges, but I feel like I kind of went everywhere. I saw your feet from the grass. Gross. I'm about 75% of the way through this game, based on what I'm looking at. Pretty cool. Actually, well, no, wait, I'm more than that. Maybe. I don't know. I, like, I'm at this point where, like, I want to keep playing this game, but I also want to travel with it, so I kind of don't want to beat it, but I've also got track and quest date I could start, and I've got plenty of reading to do, so who cares if I beat it between here and the trip. True. Uh, Halo Infinite comes out on Wednesday. Ain't that Craig Craig? That is Craig Craig. Straight Craig Craig. I, um, I, you, actually, you're kind of in a similar predicament to me. Are you going to play it? Are you going to start playing before PAX Unplugged? Because we basically are gone Friday, Saturday. And then um, back late Sunday. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably... Well, depends on when we record local chat. Um, That's true. Which, honestly, this local chat we can record whenever because it's just going to be predictions, probably, mostly. So Yeah, um, I, was, I was thinking about that. We could do a little bit of, depending on when we record, we could do a little bit of what you've been playing and then predictions. And then I'm going to pull up the I'm gonna pull up the schedule here. I had some ideas for, for game of the year. I think we should talk about it. So the, so the idea is, excuse me. This week is local chat game awards predictions. I think next week is episode 50, but I don't think we do anything special for that because I think honestly, that's a lot of game awards reacts and stuff. But then I think we should record an episode for the week of Christmas, which is uh, the week before Christmas, which is the 23rd, which is our game of the year. And, and I was thinking, um, Waypoint did this a couple years ago and I liked it, which is we, it's not game of the year. Like, what do we think the game of the year is? We have a discussion, we have categories. It's just each of the people on this the episode bring in their top three or top five and we just talk through them. So like, you know, let's say it's an hour episode. So each person gets 20 minutes to share their list and we discuss it, you know, and maybe we'll have some overlaps. Who knows? Maybe at the end, if all of ours is like a crazy game, we pick one. I don't know. But, but I think the, the, main structure is each of us brings our top three. Yeah. I kind of like that. 
Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, and then we just kind of talk through them. So it's almost like a what you've been playing, but more of a... Um, the other idea I had was we kind of go through what's been done in the year. So we kind of come through with like a best of, worst of, of the, of the year. Either through games, like, hey, remember Hitman 3? Oh, that's right, that did come out this year. This was a good year for gaming, etc. Or we do like, remember this crazy story? Um... But I don't think we do both, now that I think about it. That's almost two different episodes. Yeah. I, I, I Yeah, I, I could see. I mean, we could do... There are, like, two quote-unquote Christmas weeks that we could do two of those. You know? Oh, on the 30th, we could do the recap. Yeah, like, once the recap, once the game of, game of the year. Do I need to go this way? I don't think so. I think that's just a grass area. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to save catching wild Pokemon for when I'm not streaming. Damn. I finally got EXP share this morning. I finally hit 50 Pokemon. Right. Caught. I haven't been doing what you're doing, which is like religiously trying to catch Pokemon. I was just doing like, walk through a grass. If I catch it, I catch it. If not, yes. Yeah. Again, it's it's the only thing I can do during uh during the off time uh, during the off season yeah Hi, um Kirby. the other thing i want to do i'm gonna be honest with you you wanted to stream last night i couldn't make it i was watching the matrix um <laughs> i i kind of want to make a solo overlays so that if you want to you could just hop on and do a stream Oh, that's that's smart. I think I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, you want to talk about The Matrix? Folks, it's still good. We were going to watch it the other night, and we watched... I think we watched Luca instead, which Luca was a great movie. Luca was good, yeah. I did um, not cry. I want to watch The Matrix movies because I, I did this for Mad Max a couple years ago, and then I did it for Mission Impossible. And it was actually, uh, I don't even know, toot my own horn, but Hong Kong, it was a fantastic idea, which is basically, I rewatched all the previous movies in the series before the new movie came out. Um, and it was great for Mad Max because there's actually a couple like direct callbacks to the previous movies in Fury Road, like the moment when he, um, I forgot, there's a moment with a shotgun in Fury Road, I think where he says like, these shells are bad or something which is kind of a callback to uh, the second Mad Max when he goes to fire the shotgun shells and it just like fizzles because <laughs> they're bad. Um, and then Mission Impossible, like seeing that whole series carry through and then watching the new one. So I, I, I'm running out of time because I think the new Matrix movie is out on the 18th. So I'm trying to rewatch the first three. Um, and I remember not really liking the second. I remember the second one being okay and I remember hating the third one, but it's been so long that I'm trying to rewatch him. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I've, I've only seen the first one, and it was on an iPod Touch like 10 years ago. You should. It's on HBO Max. You should rewatch it. Yeah, they're, that's, they're we were going to watch really it, good. and then I, I just wasn't in the mood. That's fair. Um, I just, I, I was running out of time. So honestly, I may re. I watched Matrix last night. I may watch Reloaded tonight. Uh, gonna reload and then like the that. other thing is, I don't know if you have um, HBO Max, but they are the 4K HDR versions. And actually, the compression was not that bad. Um, those are the versions on HBO Max. So, because so I was gonna buy the 4K H, uh, 4K Blu-ray, and then I was like, I'll save the money. I'll just suffer through the compression a little bit, but get basically the same thing off HBO Max. What are you? What do you? So you only saw the first one. Did you at least like it when you watched? Uh... Yeah, I think I did. It's, I remember being like confused at some points, but honestly, I think that was because I was like, I, I don't think I was just like really paying attention, you know? Yeah. But yeah, this was like back in high school. 
been a good challenge. Um, I think the first time I watched them was... <laughs> it's actually really funny. I remember in fourth grade, I had this one friend that loved it. And he must have seen it when it came out, because I remember for months, people in like fourth grade, we were talking about how The Matrix is the smartest movie ever made. And it's so difficult to understand that you can't really understand it unless you're smart. And so it was like this, like, this, like, really cocky test of, like, have you seen The Matrix? Did you understand it? <laughs> but you didn't? Then you're stupid. <laughs> and, like, the understanding is just the concept of The Matrix is is fake and the real world is we're in tubs in the future, you know? Um, and so for his, like, fifth grade, for his birthday party, he had a sleepover. And I remember when my parents dropped me off, his parents were like, oh, hi, don't worry. You know, we're not going to let them stay up too late. They're not going to watch any bad movies or anything like that. And then we all stayed up in the basement till like 2 a.m. And we watched The Matrix, which is a <laughs> rated R movie. <laughs> and I, I remember just like we watched we watched Drunken Boxing. We played a bunch of Donkey Kong Adventure. We played uh, Donkey Kong Racing. And then we played, uh, I remember his his analog sticks were already bad on his N64. Oof. And he was getting mad at people, like he was doing the whole thing, like, don't flick them, that's why they're ruined. And so he was standing over people with a pillow, and if he saw you flick the controller, he would just <laughs> smack you with the pillow. Jeez. <laughs> it was like, um, so then we watched Drunken Boxing, and then we watched The Matrix. No, we watched The Matrix first, and then he was like, Did you guys see it said Drunken Boxing? I've got those. And then so we watched Drunken Boxing. Um, and I remember loving it. And then I rewatched it again, I guess, 10 years ago or something, and really liked it again. Good stuff, man. It's It still whips. It bangs. It's got such a, such a style to it, man. Slowpoke. Do you like being thunderstruck? Yeah, you're okay with it. Oh, it's super effective. That's good to know. I'm at this weird, Florida's at this weird part where it's like, it starts in the 50s in the, in the morning, and then it gets to the, like, mid 70s in the day, and I just don't know what to set my heat AC temperature setting at, because, like, it'll, it'll drop to, like, 70 and below, and I'm like, it's a little chilly in here, and I'll put the heat on, and then it'll go up to, like, 74. <laughs> I'm like, it's a little too hot in here. <laughs> And if I put if I put it at auto at like 72, then it just constantly bounces between 74 and 70. So it's just like it's it's okay. weird. I mean, thankfully, it's pretty it's it's just barely warm enough to be shorts weather. So I don't have to worry about shorts versus pants because that's that's always annoying that that threshold. Yeah. Oh, don't poison me. Whoops. Sounds like things aren't going well for you up there. No, yeah, they're okay. Who's, uh, of your, of the Pokemon you currently have, who's your favorite? Hmm. I don't know. Um. Maybe Charmander? Oh, uh, he wants to, like, what's double team? <laughs> but he's a base, isn't he? It's not as cool as it sounds, honestly. Yeah, but I can just get rid of tail whip. Whip. No, whole whip.
Hell nah. Ow. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Great job, Will. Thanks. Oh, I was over there. Hiker knob. You Hike this knob, boy. Water gun your face. Bye now. Hope you like water guns. your least favorite Pokemon? What's the Pokemon on your party that you're just like, I guess you're okay here now, but I, I wish I could replace you. Like, I, I think there's a better version of you somewhere. You know um, probably, I mean, honestly, probably Pikachu. Um, That's fair. Just not a big fan of Pikachu. And then, um, someone else on my team. Oh, Beedrill. I don't think I need a Beedrill right now. Yeah. Sorry, Hiker Knob. I do need to choose a Pokemon to teach Cut to. Uh, let me look up. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna look up best uh, HM slaves. Maybe you already have one. Yeah, let me know. Um, okay, Nido Nido King, Nido Queen is a good one. Ooh, I have one. Uh, Barney's here with a... They learn Surf and Strength. You're not there yet. Slowpoke, oh, gotcha. Surf and Strength. Sandshrew. Oh, yes, yeah, Sandshrew is not available in red. Farfetched is Cut and Fly. You have a Farfetched? You should have one by now. How do I get a Farfetched? Um, it says trade in Vermilion City. I I did a Krabby, but I think the problem is you're going to have to uh, fish for Krabby, and you're pretty far away from fishing. I'll look up uh, Farfetch'd. I think it's Cerebi has the really nice list of, yeah, where they are. Yeah, Charmander's trying to learn Rapid Spin. What's Rapid Spin? Oh, I don't, I don't want that. Oh, poor. Okay, I guess I can get rid of Bubble. Oof. Oh, yeah, you, you can trade for him in Vermilion City. So maybe just... Um, I know I missed the Goldeen yeah, in uh, by Mount Moon. So cut, cut is just a normal move. So maybe if you just pick one of your Pokemon's that you feel like you want to teach a normal move to, because it's also an attack. So 
Like, I had a Meowth. I just gave it to a Meowth. The Meowth was in the party, and I never leveled it. And it had a cut. And if I, mean, I really I needed to, give I could it throw to the Meowth in. Can you? Oh, let me check. Where are they? Are they in the TM case? A, yeah, TM, and then you should have an HM case in there. It's kind of weird, but... Did you did you pick it up? Wait, Will, can you can you go to your trainer card? Did you not save properly? Uh, I'll look it up real quick. You just keep playing. Okay. I feel like you did get it. I thought I did too, but maybe not. Oh no, yeah, you didn't get cut yet. Oh. That's what I thought. Yeah, you get cut in Vermilion City. That makes a lot more sense. Sorry, did I just spin out of your wrap? Okay. I think I have the one cam overlays almost done. You're close to learning cut, I'll tell you that much. Three oddishes. Okay, um, all the one person overlays are up on P Cloud whenever you want to set them up. They're pretty much the same, you just have to move the camps around a little bit in the trainer card. Sweet. Thank you, sir. I don't think we'll ever need a three version, but if we do, I can I can whip it up fairly quickly, I think. Yay, let's go meet Bill.
Sure, I'll help you out. So, um, just to fill some dead air here, as you can see, I have a new camera angle. I did uh, splurge a little bit over Black Friday. I got the Elgato face cam. I think being able to tweak a lot of the camera options, like exposure, ISO, etc., and save it to the camera so it doesn't keep resetting every time you open an app or start your computer is great. But I need to I need to spruce up the background a little bit. And what I'm working on is I'm working on some floating shelves on the wall. So all my models will go, most of them will go, like the Gunpla, above the shelves. And then I have some consoles here. You can see like my Dreamcast, PS1, SNES, PS4, Genesis, and my Pokemon N64, Pikachu N64. I think I can put those, tilt them up so they're displayed a little better on top. I think I'm also gonna put, I'm gonna pull the shelves out from the wall and I have a bunch of LED light strips that I'm gonna put back there so we can get a little bit more backlighting going. Now I gotta clean up a little bit. We, we had to rearrange some stuff to help my parents move this weekend. So I have my kitty, kitty carriers out right now, which is annoying. Oh. But yeah, I'm excited. Get to, uh, I feel like this backdrop, I, I, before I even moved, I knew I was gonna set up the room like this to have a nice backdrop. But with the other camera angle, you barely saw it. You just saw like a wall of board games behind me. And this is this is showing an awful lot better. And then the other thing I did, I can't show it to you because I'm using it, is I did make a a monopod for my new webcam. I made a standing monopod. I got two two PVCs and they slide in and out. They have a little wing nut bolt to tighten it with the, the tripod ball mount, and then I did a um, a galvanized iron uh, pipe base on the bottom of it. So it's working now. I just need to clean it up and spray paint the whole thing black. Wow. I've been busy, folks. I've been busy. I finally cleaned up my um, workbench so I can start working on some models again. Nice. I've got this. I've got a Gunpla. It's been going forever. I, I think, th uh, look, nothing against Gunpla model making. I've just significantly slowed down, and I think it's because when I was in the condo, those were my projects, right? But now that I have a house, there's a million other projects going on. So I, like, it's less like before model making was like, oh, I need a project, I need something to work on. Now I have too much to work on. This is Vermilion City, right? Nope. Cerulean City. Sorry, I'm terrible at remembering the names of... Sorry about your house getting robbed. I want like, I want like a Google map version of a fire red map. You know what I mean? There's gotta be one of those. Oh, you know what website probably has it is the... Wikipedia. No, um, they're too old school. They probably won't. There's a website I found that has just video of oh, video, the video game Atlas. Got it. Go on there now. It's vgmaps.com. Video, video game Atlas. And I just did a stupid thing by clicking that, which was turn my camera off. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did that earlier. I thought I middle mouse. Oh, no. Apparently, Pokemon. Hey, I love it when it has the same link. Fire Red, Kanto, one point seven nine. Yeah, this website's really cool. Oh yeah, they just stitched it all together. So you're on your way north. Uh, now I'm on my way east. I went through that oh, house. Oh, because you that... finished the north part. Yeah. But you didn't. Did you clear the north area and meet Bill? Yeah, I just did all that. Okay. He gave me the SS Sorry, I'm just, ticket. I'm finding it hard to pay attention to this. You, yeah. you, you shouldn't go east though. I don't mean to step in here, but south is the next story beat. Oh, I thought east was because the the people moved. Oh wait, let me. Unless there's not an east and there's just a backyard. Yeah, you want to go south. Stop karate chopping me. Let me double check. You just keep doing what you're doing. Because I I kind of wish I 
knew this, and that's why I'm kind of telling you, because there's certain points where I'm like, I'm not really sure what's next, and I just kept visiting a bunch of areas. And then I'd be like, oh, oh, this, oh, now I can do this, you know. So... Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I'm pretty I sure you want to go south. Yeah, I just can't go so south. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't. I only said east because I, I was here. Like, yeah, I don't no, know. Keep where. going. You're going the right way. You're no, I right know. <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> you can tell me when I'm, like, clearly going wrong. Okay. Oh, that slow poke. You're doing it right now. Is this just a double root? Yeah, it's like the, I really like how they do this. So you can you can shortcut the grass. Sometimes one directional, sometimes both directions. So if you're just trying to travel between areas, you can say shortcut the grass. I don't care about that. But I want to go to that middle house. <gasps> oh, already have one of you. Sorry. Man, so I, I'm having to share my 3DS now because Maggie started playing a Harvest Moon game. Um, it's not a problem yet, but I was like, oh, you know, Christmas is coming. Maybe it's a good time to just, I'll just buy her like a 2DS XL, right? Apparently they're sold out everywhere and they're, st they're like 100, 180 bucks if you find them used. Oh, really? Like, I, I, guess, I guess that whole vintage console gaming is going through the roof applies to like near generations as well. It's crazy. Because like a few months ago, there was a 2DS XL like uh, deal. I forget where, but it was like 80 bucks for one. And oh, I thought about just thought about buying one. That is honestly, that's what that's what you if you if you need a, a 3DS, just get a 2DS XL because that's what my 3DS XL is. It is a <laughs> I never turn the 3D on. So, um, am I allowed to use the daycare? Yeah, you raise it's one not super Pokemon? useful, but yeah, I don't think I'm using it right now. Yeah, a new 2DS XL is available for three hundred twenty dollars on Amazon right now. Wow, three hundred ten, three twenty. I think they're just out of stock. Like even a 2DS is like two hundred. Road's closed. We gotta go in the underground tunnel. This is one of the, this is so stupid. Like, they say the road's closed, but the road is just a bridge. So now they make you go through the underground path, which is nothing. So it's not like they're redirecting you through a different area with new content. It's just, no, it's just, you have to go underground instead of through the building. Oh, I guess there's items down there. You see what I mean? Now you yeah. just... It's like... That's... I'm not saying that's bad game design, but for a game that's so full of clever stuff, that is pointless. Oh. <laughs> Man, I have so many new routes to catch Pokemon on. Ugh. Oh, I'm tired.
Uh, tell me about some uh, dream Pokemon. Which Pokemon do you really, really, really want in this game? I really want an Oddish. I really want um, an uh, Gyarados. Um, oh, yeah. And I really want an Abracadabra. I know you really want a, a, a Mew. Oh, a Keep Mew and a Mew too. Take them. I'll take them. Hi, are you two? Oh, hello. What? Camper Ricky with his one Pokemon. Hey guys, you know you can have six, right? I just... love the one because it's just like, oh, thank God, this is gonna be so quick. Uh, you know? is electric a good against water. Electric I... is two times. Yeah, that was the whole point of the second um, gym. I know, I couldn't remember. What's a Squirtle? It looks like a Charmander, uh, which is good. Squirtle Squirts. Squirts. I still want to know if you're allowed to drink Squirtle Squirt. Is it just oh, pee? God. Weren't people discussed? That's nasty. You're like nasty. if you were on an Did island you and you had a Squirtle and he could just produce fresh, clean water. If you were on an island and you had to squirt, wouldn't you do it? What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you were on an island and you had to poop, would you do it? Did you be a nasty little poop boy on the island? Would you be a nasty little poop boy on the island for me? <laughs> hey, mommy called. Wants to know if you want to be a nasty little poop boy on this desert island. <laughs> hey, hey, mommy called. She wants to know if you want to be a nasty little poop boy on this <laughs> island with me. Is that right? Yes. I want to make sure I got it yeah, right. Mo so mommy called, left a message uh, verbatim. Do you want to be a nasty little poop boy on this island for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, uh, mommy called. Uh, she left a message. Something about she wants to know if you want to be a nasty little poop boy on this island with her. Do you know what that means? <laughs> Sounds like fun, honestly. I don't mean to tell you what to do, but. Hey, mama, she a call. Uh, hey, uh. Ah, uh, mommy called and, uh. Something about pooping on an island. I don't know. Nancy little poop poop. She said you shit in the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. I should have read what Pokemon they were sending out. Apologies if I'm distracted, but. Uh, Maggie and I realized we haven't been to the beach yet. Uh, since we've moved down, you've been too busy, so we're gonna go walk on the beach and have a nice dinner tonight. So far. Did I misspell famous? Oh my god, that's an hour away. Oh, I did. We're not yeah, going to Ian, that can beach. you change the Twitch to say famous? Fuck off, Zach. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. You know, I'm tired. I had like two hours of sleep. Charmander? Oh, Zach, I need to know. I need to know what you think of Hamilton hitting the back of her stuff. No, this is it's different, so Zach. bonkers. So this is save data, Zach. Zach, I need you. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. But it's if you okay. got a, if you got a hot if you got a hot pin, if you got a hot pin, right we're hot. gonna need you to use that to uh, take a poop on the be an ass people and take a poop I on the beach. I need you to give me the hottest pin that you can muster. What do you think about this pin craze? I feel like Penny Arcade. I don't know if they made it, but they are absolutely expanding on this whole like collect the pins thing isn't it cool aren't pins cool what do you think about that 
I mean, it does nothing for me, but when you get one of those pins, you're like, damn, these are cool. That's cool. Like, yeah, I have that I 20th... Good to collect them. I have those Mario 20th anniversary... Uh, mm -hmm. Or whatever, anniversary 30th... Um, pin set from Nintendo, and those are cool. Those are That's like cool. Fancy pins. I just, you know... That's a baby boy. Um... This is the Somebody most disgusting Pokemon I've ever seen. <laughs> Butterfreeze? You haven't even seen a Velonat yet. I want to... Uh, if this thing was near me in... If I lived in Pokemon time and this thing was near me, I would literally squish it. Well, this is a good question. We got that whole, like, Twitter meme going around pretend like Pokemon is real. What do you think your life would be like if, if Pokemon were real? What would you be doing? I'd be... Strangling them, shoveling their bodies into furnaces, cremating them, maybe. <laughs> um, I I don't think I could be a trainer. I think I'd be one of those people that has one as a pet, just in the house. Yeah, you know, one that can't kill me. I don't Definitely even think. Not a I don't even think yeah, I don't even think I would work in a Pokemon lab because it's too much biology, and I'm not a big biology fan. You know. I also, I would not be a trainer because from what I can tell, 99% of trainers just spend their time standing on the roads waiting to battle random people that come by. True. And that sounds, it's probably exciting to be a trainer in a Pokemon battle, but it's probably very boring to just sit there waiting for people to walk past. It's also like, I have, I'm, I have social anxiety and I would not be able to just yell at people walking by me enough to stop them and force them into a battle. That feels very uncomfortable. Also, do are there regular bugs and animals in Pokemon World? I believe so. Because aren't there dogs? Let me look it up. Are there? Because like, am I gonna be like, oh man, there's a Butterfree stuck in our windowsill? Get the the bat. Uh, real world animals. Oh, that's true. That's true. Pokemon Pikachu is known as the mouse Pokemon, or the electric mouse. So they they show them, but they also reference real world animals in the canon. So there are, it's rare the mentions. I don't know, it's a little bit like Mission to Zix where because they are putting on a fake world, they can't have everything be fake. So they occasionally make reference to things that don't necessarily explicitly mean it exists in that world. So it's like people freaking kind of, out when, uh, when the orc says meets back on the menu. Orcs wouldn't know what a menu is. Yeah. But yeah. on a So I I think there are concrete examples of anime and manga where they show other animals. Gotcha. But I think like Pikachu saying is the mouse Pokemon, I don't I I personally don't buy that meaning that there are there are mice that exist in Pokemon World. But there are Pikachus you know. in people's walls that eat come out and eat yeah. their food. You gotta you. trap them. You actually rip their tails off. <gasps> I'm just gonna look up. Pikachu in a mouse trap. Mm, fat Bird is evolving. Can I change her name to Thick Bird now? I was about to say, but I don't. I'm gonna look up how to change it because I think you have to go to somebody to change I think it. It's, doesn't Bill change it? Oh, maybe it's someone maybe. else who rates nickname. Pidgeotto, Fat Bird. Congrats, my girl. Uh, Lavender Town. I, I think what I'm getting is you have to go to Lavender Town to do it. Isn't that the scary time? For some reason, I had a strong urge to look up Pikachu in a mousetrap, and uh, there's a lot of them. So, rule 34.xxx. Oh, Pikachu. your party just evolved, didn't it? Can we, after this, let's do a quick party check to make sure I've got everything correct. Uh, Zach says the argument people made is that one or two episodes of the anime they show birds that were not Pokemon flying in the background. But I take this as weak evidence that real animals exist in the Pokemon. That's fair. I think Pokemon are the animals, basically. I, I am a strong believer in that.
I um I found that Pokemon is a fantastic game to play in front of the TV. Yes. And just have something running. And Maggie's been watching a lot of American Dad. I don't know why, but she's ripped through like 10 seasons of American Dad recently. And um, I was thinking about putting, and, I, and when I have control of the TV playing Pokemon, I would just put on Adam Savage because there's some tested stuff that I have been missing. Um, I'm thinking about putting on the Pokemon show. That's pretty good. Just I've, immersed. I've been watching Dragon Ball Z. Uh, oh, it's good. It's so with, good. Uh, yeah, I, I was. I've been watching a lot of Carbonaro Effect, but that show you actually have to that? pay attention to. It's the magician show where he like, uh, like fools people into thinking things are real and stuff. It's on HBO Max. It's it's actually pretty good. I, I really enjoy it. It really makes me laugh. I don't even know how to spell that. It's like Carbonara, oh but with an O. In it. What did your... You have a Pidgeot? Yes. Oh, Zach likes this, the stream setup. Ian made it. Very good. Why did Thanks, I Zach. switch to this Pokemon? Only this is one of those things where I had an idea and I said, let me just spend way too much time making it. And uh, I like how it turned out. I feel like I feel like stream overlays is one of those things where it doesn't take that much effort to make a good one. And you don't even have to be that good at Photoshop. Like, I'm not that good at Photoshop. And it upsets me so much how many super popular streamers put zero effort into their overlays. True. It's just oh, like, come yeah. on now. Oh, squeaky. Um... You done with this fight yet? It's taking forever. What do you mean? I've been fighting like 15 people. And you're not paying attention, so you don't get to say anything. That's fair. I just want to check your lineup. Make sure the trainer card's up to date. I know I have at least one change to make. I think I've fought two other people since the first time you asked me. When I... Yeah, when I asked you to... Yeah, because you weren't paying attention. Me? We've got ACDC, who's a Pikachu, Fat Bird, who's a Pidgeot. Yeah, what is that? That is a Pidgeot. Can we double check that? It is a Pidgeotto. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Then we've got Charmander, who's a Squirtle, Beedrill, who's a Beedrill. And that replaces Kakuna. But, oh, yeah, he's already good. Rock Obama and Barney. Okay. I think I'm good. So I just have the one change, basically. Oh, I did that. How far is Jack's Beach? 30 minutes. That's not bad. Person just has three Pidgeys. I, I love it when they do that. It's like... Like, part of me is like, oh, maybe they have different stats. Like, one's really good at defense, one's good at attack. But I know the truth is they're just like, nah. He just <laughs> likes Pidgeys. My, um, my friend Jean-Luc. I remember talking to him, like, seven or eight years ago, and he was playing Pokemon, and he said, yeah, I'm bored, so I'm playing Pokemon, but my party is entirely Eevees and their evolutions. Because <laughs> you have, like, Vaporeon and Flareon or whatever, so you can have, like, a water one and a fire one. That's a cool, that's a cool idea. Ooh, I got the VS Seeker. Oh, there's a Waffle House. Oh, 
I got really excited. I'm looking at Google Maps and I saw a restaurant icon and then underneath it, it said Deborah's Dog Styles. And I was like, is this a hot dog restaurant? And it turns out, no, it's just a uh, dog groomer next to a Domino's pizza. Oh, I thought it was a sex club. That's kind of, honestly, I could see that because they like, they're like, we can't say doggy styles, but if we say dog styles, but I can also see a groomer accidentally calling their place doggy style. <laughs> That's funny, Will. You're funny. I know. Hello, Zara. I'm just in your house. Do you like to fish? Yes. I like your style. I think we're going to be friends. Take this. <gasps> yes. Oh, I'm going to have so many Pokemon to catch with this old rod. Yes. Oh, so, okay, wait. Let me look up something for you, because I believe the best HM slave is Krabby, which I believe you can get out with the old rod. Let me double check. And I can do that from the from the edge, right? I don't yeah. have to surf to it. Oh, no, wait. There, there was a really good website that told me like because I was trying to catch a crabby and they did a really good job of being like in this location with this type of rod here's what you can catch I'm trying to find that oh yeah this one works oh I'm sorry I don't think you oh Bureau for oh, you can't. I don't think you can catch a crabby. Well, if I'm reading this right, I don't think you can catch a crabby with an old rod in Fire Red. Gotcha. Just kind of sucks. That's all, because my crabby knows surf, cut, and strength, and then I just have fly on my Pidgeot. So how'd you get your crabby? I I think I used a uh, a good rod. Oh, gotcha. <gasps> Bike voucher. They should really have like dolphin catching in Pokemon. Just murder them. Oh, I gotta trade a Spiro for a Farfetch'd. Means I gotta catch another Spiro. Because I ain't trading Captain Jack. Hello from the poopy thighs. Yeah, I think you need a good rod to catch Krabby. You know what I did the other night? What? Um, we went and saw a rocket launch. It's great. Oh, nice. Yeah, there was a SpaceX launch. It was at 6.12 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, which kind of lined up nicely. I, I heard about it that morning, and then I was like, if we leave my house at 5 p.m., takes about 50 minutes to get to St. Augustine, which I know St. Augustine has this fishing pier that goes like four or 500 feet out. And I'd heard it's great. 
So we go to the fishing pier. It's like two bucks per person. We get there with about 10 minutes before the launch. We walk all the way to the end of the pier and it's it's almost night. It's very dark, but you can still kind of see a little bit of light on the horizon. But it was like, it was like perfect. And there were no clouds or anything. And you look south and I'm gonna say, you know, a couple dozen miles south is Kennedy Space Center. So basically, as soon as the rocket took off, it showed up on the horizon. It's this like very bright orange light. And then we just watched it and it went up and then the light went out and I did the separation and then it kicked back in. And we literally watched it for like three or four minutes, which is uh, very good because the thing about rocket watching is like, you can see it from a lot of places, but part of it is like, okay, how long, how much stuff is on the horizon in the way? Is it going to be cloudy? Is it going to be bright enough? Yeah. Like we tried to watch one from my um, sister's place a couple weeks ago and it was cloudy. So we didn't even see it. <laughs> um, but this was like really good. Just being able to see it immediately. It's going right over the sky. It's super dark because you're just looking out over the ocean towards it. It was great. It was awesome. And uh, because of the whole space, I don't know. I feel like there needs to be a term for like the new capitalist space race in a way. But because of that whole thing going on, there's just there's like one to two launches a month minimum now. There's just so many launches. Um, so, yeah. Next up for me, am I going to the SS Ann or am I doing Diglett's Cave? Uh, SS Ann. Okay. Yeah, so head on in there. I will just say, this is something I didn't realize. Don't go to the top floors. M make your way bottom up and touch everything. Because there's a point in the top floor where the ship just goes, bye, and then it leaves. Gotcha. Man, this trainer card is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it is so really cool. Good. Oh, yeah, look at this kitchen. Oh, I can't wait to get a Snorlax. I love Snorlax. Most of the, po po most of the, most of the Pokemon I like are, are the ones that were cool in the N64 Smash Brothers. Like Snorlax would clear the entire screen. I just, I'm not, I like, I respect Snorlax. I think he's a cool Pokemon. I just don't like him as a, as a fighting Pokemon. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would, I would, I would own a Snorlax. Wow. It's not too late to sign up as an official co streamer for the Game Awards on Thursday. Yay. Our digital co stream kit and overlays. Oh, anyone can co-stream the show for free. Official co-streamers will get a special toolkit of images and assets. I, I think for me personally, I don't know about you. I think I've decided that I'm not going to watch the Game Awards this year. Yes. I hate it. I keep subjecting myself to it just because I feel like we should co-stream it and we're not doing that this year. So I'm just not going to watch it. I'll just find a list when it's done and look at what I want to look at. You know? Yeah, I, I have to watch it. But if I didn't have to watch it, uh, I probably would. Yeah, it's just. No. Oh my god. I just came across somebody on Twitter who has your exact same avatar. Well, your old avatar. The one that looks like a Nazi emblem. Sinistar? Yeah. What? It doesn't look like a Nazi emblem. 100%. Let me just make sure. 100% looks like a Nazi emblem. He's got like an iron cross in the background. No, it's a face. I know, but it looks it looks like like if you told me that was like an S a medal given to SS troops by Nazi Germany for valor, I would 100% believe you. I mean, it's like a pixel version of it, but that design. Yeah, 100%.
It's a good song. I'm gonna look up some Pokemon facts. Just kidding. I accidentally Googled Pokemon level 34. Live reacts. Pokemon means pocket monsters. Saudi Arabia banned Pokemon at one point because it was promoting polytheism. I think it banned the show. Pikachu directly translates as sparkly mouse noise. That's kind of funny. Lots of Pokemon names are puns. For example, the powers of Mimikyu are literally to mimic you and pseudo woodo, pseudo wood or fake wood. Just like Charmander, Char, a lot of bad puns. Oh, but Squirtle's not a pun. No, Squirtle squirts for real. There is nothing punny about yeah. that. And Bulbasaur isn't because he's a bulb, like a flower bulb, you know. There was originally a Pokemon based on Dolly the Sheep. Over, I guess how many Pokemon cards have been sold? Ten. Close. 30 billion. Wow, I was close. Oh gosh, this Clefairy's seen some shit. Mm. Fact number nine. It's hard to say what the first Pokemon ever created was. That's that's the fact. Oh, it's a wiggly tough. This website sucks. Sorry, tough. Gold and silver were meant to be the last Pokemon. Ash's Pokemon was originally meant to be a Clefairy and not Pikachu. Huh. Gentleman Arthur. The TV series was briefly banned in Sweden. Why? Oh. Because the Pokemon series is tied in with games and other merchandise, Swedish TV didn't show it, as it's technically an advert for the products, and it's illegal to advertise to children in Sweden. Oh. You can see Pokemon on Swedish TV now, but you won't hear Gotta Catch Em All, as this is a form of stealth advertising. Go Sweden, you know? The anime was only meant to last for one season, but now it's been over 20 series and 23 films. 23 films? <laughs> yeah, we're it's gonna a watch them all. Nightmare. We should do How a nightmare How many Pokemon show we watch them all? Oh, God. How many Pokemon have been caught in Pokemon Go? 50. Close, 88 billion. Oh, that was close. The smallest Pokemon is the Flabebe. Flabebe. It's only 10 centimeters tall. I don't know if it's Flabebe, Flabebe? F-L-A, B, X -L. weird E, B, weird E. Yeah, Flabebe. Flabebe. I do actually know that one. Flabebe. This guy just called me a rude up. child. How to pronounce. It's Flabebe. Shut up. I'm listening to it. Flabebe. Uh -oh. I'm going to look it up again. God, somebody has a Pokemon channel where every video is them using Pokemon Refresh, which uh, I believe it's in, it's in Sun and Moon, I think, where you, you can choose your Pokemon and then you can like virtually pet it <laughs> and it like adds some small stat boost to them. So every video is just them selecting a Pokemon and just caressing it for three minutes. Gross. La BB. I don't know. I, I'm I'm having trouble finding the official. Flabebe. Cafe. 
Flabebe. Yeah, it's it's cafe. Flabebe. <laughs> Flabebe. Okay, there we go. Hot Pokemon stuff going on right here. Hey. The largest Pokemon is Eternatus, which is a dragon Pokemon. It can be up to 100 meters tall, which is a third Jeepers. of the Eiffel Tower. How do you keep How that many in the how many people have downloaded the Pokemon Go app? Uh, 200. Close, 750 million. Ooh, Do you remember when that game came out, like how insane it was overnight? How people many got, people like, were playing that? Cars. I, I, I think for me, the weirdest one was it came out and I went to work the next day and there were two women in their 30s and 40s standing outside with their phones trying to catch Pokemon. And I was just like, like they did not look like nerds. They just looked like normal women walking to work where they probably worked at like the IRS office in the building or something. And they're just like, oh, look at it, look at it. I'm just like, what is happening? It's weird. That's wild. Oh. For the Pokemon, the first movie, uh, the voice actors, I believe, are the same as the show, but the studio wanted to replace all of the voice actors with celebs, including voicing Ash, Leonardo DiCaprio. <gasps> that would have been so hot. Did you ever watch Detective Pikachu, the movie? Yeah, it was okay. I thought it was good. You know, it wasn't a bad movie, which honestly a lot of yeah. AAA movies nowadays are bad. And... It was respectful to Pokemon, and it was just fun seeing all the Pokemon. Story was okay, but it was just good. I liked it. Oh, look at that horsey. About to get Thunderstruck, uh, horsey. Pokemon Red and Blue only reached Europe three years after it was made. Like English Red and Blue or <sighs> Japanese Red and Blue? Uh... Like, did they bring I mean, in English. three years after the English release? Three years after the Japanese release. Okay. How long was it after the Japanese release that the English release came out? I don't know. Pokemon Red Blue release date. Uh, initial release was February of 96. It was two and a half years until the U.S. release in 98. Wow. That's the long. Uh, what does what does Rocket and Team Rocket stand for? Running out, cause Kong eats Tamitha. Honestly, not that far off. It stands for Raid on the City, Knock Out Evil Tusks. What? I know. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> um. 898 Pokemon in the Pokédex. Oh, uh, this this is this is a sad fact, unfortunately. Mewtwo was meant to be the most powerful Pokemon ever. However, later series always had to be like, oh, we found a new, more powerful Pokemon. I think that's kind of sad, honestly. That is that is you have a story point. It's the most powerful Pokemon ever. It was created in a lab by scientists, and then later series, you're like, oh, well, we have to one-up that, so we're gonna have an ancient dragon Pokemon, you know. Yeah, aren't some of the Pokemon they catch in later movies and stuff are, like, gods? Um, yeah, kind of. Like, some of the later ones, they're, like, they're, like, ancient Pokemon that, like, ruled the world because they were kind of like dinosaurs in a way, like, they were just super powerful. So you catch those. Well, I think you bring them back from the dead. Just crazy stuff like that. Kanto is based on a real region in Japan called Kanto. You know what they say about sailors and battling. What do Saffron they say? Saffron City is based on Tokyo. How many types of Pokemon do you think there are? 15. Close. 18. Ooh, that was pretty close. So 
So I think goals for this stream, if I may, let's get you through the SSN, let's get you cut. You got plenty of areas to grind and we start next stream with a badge attempt at the gym here. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Yeah. Sorry, Leonard. I'm gonna have a horrible time trying to stay up until my regular bedtime. Hey, let's talk about your vaccine. How'd the booster go? Um, no, it was good. We went to a local pharmacy that was like five minutes away, filled out a bunch of forms, uh, sat down, she came over and did the vaccine. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I felt fine um, until, like I said, 1 a.m. woke up with chills, and I was like teeth clattering, like oh. shaking. I was yeah, and uh, I try, I like put the mattress warmer up, covered myself in blankets, <laughs> and then like it was probably every 15 minutes I was waking up, being too hot, throwing the blankets off, being too cold, throwing the back. So I... That's the worst. Between 1 a.m. and 6.30 when I finally got up and just went to the living room, I probably slept, like, 30 minutes total, like, on and off. Wow. Like, it was... I was so out of it. Man, that's crazy. Well, yeah, at least you got it now. Yeah, totally. Oh, I'm that reminds it. me. You know what I'm going to do right now is that whole PAX Unplugged Clear app thing. I keep forgetting to do it. Oh, I need to. I said that make you like register your vaccination status with them. It makes it easier. So what I think are you still wearing your uh, door fortress mask is that your preferred yeah that's my usual one it also like fits really well yeah uh. I had uh, my like floral cloth one that I was wearing for a long time then I I switched to surgical mask this is gonna sound counterintuitive but my fabric one was a little bit too thick and it was kind of hard to breathe for a long period of time and so I switched to like an approved surgical mask, which was actually thinner and easier to breathe in. Um, and that was when I did the Amtrak trip. I was like, I had to wear a mask for like 20 hours straight, even while sleeping. And I was like, okay, I'll use the surgical. And then I've just been using that since because yeah. we just have them lying around. I like. But I think I, I'm, I think I'm gonna switch to a black one though. Ooh. The the reason I like the Dwarf okay. Fortress one the way Karen's company designed them is I can tuck it under the bridge of my nose of my glasses so it'll never oh, fog nice. up. Yeah. It's just, it was hard finding face masks on Amazon because a lot of them look good and they have great reviews, but then you go down to the reviews and a lot of them are like, this smells like chemicals, it gave me a rash. So I ended up going to, the FDA doesn't do it anymore, but for a while they had a list of like officially approved mask vendors. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah, and so off that list, I found some. So. 
ordered some masks. All right, let me see if I can get my vaccine. What's the name of that app? Or do they did they send out an email for it? I think they, I I put it in the Discord. I think it's called Clear. Okay, I gotta I'll fill it out after we just finish streaming. I'm actually I'm excited to walk around because I have some like birthday cash and stuff Ooh. like burning a hole in my wallet. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm flying southwest, so I have two free check bags. One bag is gonna be like a little bit empty because it's gonna have my clothes, but I'm not gonna bring that many clothes. But I I'm just thinking, worst case, and I've done this before, I buy so much stuff that I just go to u-haul or ups or whatever and i buy a box and i put it in there and i seal the box and i can check that as a bag with southwest so oh, nice. yeah i'm kind of curious what's going on with the masks up there y'all still wearing masks um i i i wear masks when i go into like a, any sort of like medical place or private business sort of thing but like you, we we don't have to it's not mandated anymore so like when i go to the when i go to costco or the grocery store or something like i don't mm -hmm. typically wear a mask uh people do and I, I can't tell if people are doing it out of abundance of caution or because they aren't vaccinated but i also realize if someone's yeah. not getting vaccinated i don't think they're gonna wear a mask either <laughs> So. What's what's the percentage? What's the percentage of let's say you go to a grocery store? What's the percentage of people in there wearing a mask? That's probably 50, other than employees. 50, 50. Oh really? Yeah. Because in Florida, so I've stopped wearing a mask. But like you said, unless if I walk in and they ask, I wear a mask, or if it's like a rule, then I'll, I'll put the mask on. But I just I kind of hit this point where I'm like I'm vaccinated and I'm boosted. I, I'm not saying like definitively I absolutely don't need to wear a mask, but it's like if I can't. If I still need to wear a mask when I'm vaccinated and boosted, then I'm going to wear a mask for the rest of my life. And I don't like that line of logic, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's interesting in Florida, it's probably 25% of people wearing masks, which is interesting because when I first came to Florida last June, you know, three, four months after COVID, it was like nobody wearing a mask. And then I came down for November and everybody was wearing a mask. So... Despite what people say, I feel like Florida actually is taking COVID somewhat seriously. Probably not the Florida government, but people in Florida are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't. I'm just I'm just curious what it's going to be in Philly because I I know we'll have to wear a mask during the convention, but and I'm going to bring a mask and I'm not complaining. I'm just curious how different it's going to feel Philly versus the U.S. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna step away for a bit. Actually, I'll be in the background just taking some pictures and stuff for this clear app. Okay. Have fun with your pictures. I'll be, I'll be back. Have fun storming the castle. Or I'll switch Pokemon. You got bit. Walking a plank if I lose. Chomp. Damn. 
Damn, fat bird. Growing up fast. Ooh. Romantic. Yeah, give me $640. Boom. Go back to the healing lady. Not the healing lady. Hey, let me sleep with my Pokemon. Thank you. Fight me? That's a Snorlax, sir. <gasps> Goldeen, 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 Goldeen. Thunder shot. Drink that potion, Pikachu. Drink it. Competing against the young keeps me youthful! He's back. How's it going? Good. I finished the first floor. The bottom floor. Oh. And actually the bottom and the second floor. Or next one up. And I'm on the next nice. one after that. Um Clear App was kind of cool. It was it you took a picture of your ID. And then you took a picture of your face. 
And then it was like, take another picture of your face and our AI will determine that they match. <laughs> it's weird. I'm like, That's wild. okay, whatever. And then uh, you just take a picture of the vaccination card and put in the info. And then I guess at the, at the end, what it does is it shows a QR code and it has your face at the top in the clear app. So I guess you just show that and they scan it. And they're like, oh yeah, clear verified you, so you're good. Nice. A little bit easier. Just trying to think of what we should do in Philadelphia, other than PAX. I think cheesesteaks, Liberty Bell, Rocky Steps, Although yeah. they're a little out of the way when I was looking at them, but... I know Karen used to go to Philly a lot, so she had a bunch of stuff for us to try out. Or, like, yeah. there was a bunch of I stuff she knew. Yeah. It's it's kind of weird, but in a way it's nice. It helps you focus when we're doing a video about a place. It's not necessarily what we think is fun or what we want to do. It's, like, what shows well on a video, you know? Yeah. So, like, like, I don't really care about the Liberty Bell, but, like, we have to. I'm assuming it's visible. I don't actually want to go in and do a big tour or anything. Uh, from what I remember, you just like go into a building and look at it. But I think you can see oh, it from okay. the outside. Because that would be preferred. Because we have a limited amount of time, you know. Oh yeah, it looks like you can just see it in a courtyard. Five twenty six Market Street. Yeah, I realized I've really never really been to Philly. Even though it was close, it was nothing against Philly, I just never really had a huge reason to go, you know. Yeah, I went as a kid. We saw like the Liberty Bell and stuff, but I don't really remember it that well. All right, so that's cool. It's not that far. It's only a couple blocks from the convention center, so we could walk down there and do stuff. Cool. I like this boat. I feel like it's it's better than traveling down a road and there's a bunch of trainers. It's like you're going in people's rooms and meeting people and finding stuff, and some of them want to fight. I always, I really like that. gonna watch the wheel of time series after you're done with all the books uh no i just haven't had time we just we finished season one of westworld so now i just gotta find the time to start it i i think that's one of those where i normally do the whole read the book and then watch the thing but i think i want to start doing the opposite which is watch the thing get interested and then go to the book for like more information more world building more lore you know. Yeah, that's what I did with Game of Thrones, and I didn't mind that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The I, Game of Thrones books are they worth reading? Uh, I mean, that's a no. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say they're not done. So. Yeah. I, I really, I've read one through four, and I, I really enjoy them. I just. I, I don't think this is a problem with the books. I think it's a problem with the show, but it felt like the show really just took... It was like, oh, this show is this book, and there's 100 scenes in this book, so we'll just do scenes 1 through 10, episode 1, scenes 11 through 20, episode 2. It felt like 
they did not do a good job of establishing each episode individually. It was just stuff happening, stuff happening. More characters, more characters. And then also spreading the plot sideways instead of progressing forward in the show. I, I think I dropped it like halfway through season two. I was just like... I was like, I don't trust them to pay off in the end, and this is barely going anywhere right now. Yeah, the book's good. The book does like... Um, does like character chapters, which which I like. That's um, I like that. Yeah, that's a good format. Yeah, and, and I think that I think the format works better as a book. The format I'm complaining about with the TV show works better in a book. Like it doesn't work well as a TV show. But yeah, the book. So good. I wouldn't have the same complaint. I enjoyed it. And the wheel time books are have been good. So far, I feel like there's some. There's one other series that I really want to read. Not Wheel of Time, Discworld. I think it's Discworld. I've read the first four books so far. Terry Pratchett's interesting because like his books are like all different series spread out. So, like stuff. Oh, yeah. Like if you want to read a series, you might be reading like book one, five, and ten. But they're not labeled mm -hmm. that way. Um, it's just like there's a really handy guide on his website uh, that has like, oh, if you want to read this, like the witches series, read all these books. Like, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, I, th I think I'm almost done with the first Hyperion book, and it has been pretty much the same level of quality throughout. Very, very good. You dare sleep me. Oh, Is he on the boat? Heck yeah, he is. I don't remember him being on the boat. Are you on the top floor yet? Nope. Or, I mean, I don't, I don't know what floor I'm on, honestly. Oh. I'm not outside. That reminds me, I need to look up how EXP share works in Fire Red. Damn, son. It hits. Stop hyper fanging me. So, so EXP share in this game, I'm, I'm used to it in later generations, which is that if you have it, then all Pokemon in the party share. But this one is if if you have a Pokemon that's holding EXP share, yeah. then it gets part of the EXP. It doesn't have to come out. So you can use it to... I guess, I guess that way you could level three Pokemon at the same time. You could level the first Pokemon, you could level the Pokemon that finishes the fight, and the Pokemon share e holding EXP share. That's helpful. Oh, no, I'm getting hungry. I know, I am too. I think I might call it after the boat. Yeah. Because uh, you, you'll get cut on the boat. And we've been doing almost two hours now. Man, I gotta work tomorrow, too.
I rubs I'm rubbing the captain's back. Yeah, show me your cut. Okay, um, nice. I'm about wrapping up. Good, I just fought my rival and I got cut. Yeah, I just want to see what on the other end of the SS can. Uh, so there is uh, another one. Captain, Captain my captain. I don't know what's up. I think I didn't go up here. And I left, and then it advanced for me. Oh, there's just more people to fight. Do you want it? We could pause it here. Yeah. Because with the cut, this now lets you go backwards more easily. This lets you... All those areas we, we went through, you can now um, go train up in there. Catch and we Pokemon, can just remember, remember I have some people to fight on the AM still. Yeah. Well, no, you could do that off stream. Oh, okay. I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'll do that. Off. I think the captain was the only story thing. Um, and then just be prepared. I don't. I think there's two gym fights we can do next one because you. I think both of the towns you pass through have a gym. Okay. Perfect. So. Um, this should be fun. Yeah, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Zach, thanks for watching. Other Zach, thanks for watching. Uh, Subpixel team, uh, also thanks for watching. Um. We will be back Tuesday with more Poke Will, so definitely tune in for that. Uh, until Not then. Not sure what time yet. Maybe we'll do an 8 p.m. Eastern, and that way we can more easily get two hours in. Who knows? Yeah. So we'll figure that out and let you know. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me get ready to switch it over here. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.